2013 Canadian Open Mathematics Challenge Part A. Determine the positive integer n that satisfies the following equation. All right, so we need to get a common denominator for this. So 2 to the power of 10 plus 1 over 2 to the power of 9 plus 1 over 2 to the power of 8 is equal to n over 2 to the power of 10. So 2 to the power of 10 is the common denominator. Multiply top and bottom here by 2 to the power of 1. Multiply top and bottom here by 2 to the power of 2. That's going to give me 1 plus 2 plus 4 on the numerator, and the denominator is 2 to the power of 10, the common denominator. Okay, so now we've got 2 to the power of 10 as the denominators on both sides, so get rid of them. And on this side, it just becomes 7, and on that side is n. And there you go, n is equal to 7. Determine the positive integer, integer k for which the parabola y is equal to x squared minus 6 passes through the point kk. So I guess we just have to substitute kk into the equation, so it would be k is equal to k squared minus 6. All right, put everything on one side, k squared minus k minus 6, I believe. And I think this factors very nicely. k, k, 2, 3, uh, plus minus, yeah. So k would be equal to either minus 2 or 3. But they want the positive integer k. So k is only equal to 3. So just make sure you don't miss that. In the figure below, the circles have radii 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. The total area that is contained inside an odd number of these circles is mx for a positive in number m. What is the value of m? Okay, the, this question, I don't say this very often, but this is a terribly worded question because I stared at this for the longest time and I couldn't understand what they were asking. What do they mean by contained inside an odd number of these circles? And I went through all kinds of scenarios. Do they mean one circle, three circles, five circles? Because that's odd. And then it finally... And I'll be honest, I, I'm going to admit it. I had to look at the solution. I couldn't figure out what they, what do they mean. What they mean is that they're labeling these circles. So the inside circle is circle one. And then the circle next to it would be circle two. And then the circle next to it would be circle three. And then the next circle would be circle four. And then the final circle, which is the one that's the biggest, that's called circle 5. And they want you to figure out the area that's inside those circles. Circle 1, circle 3, and circle 5. But it, it's even more confusing than that because, for example, the area inside circle 1, well, that's easy, right? Just that area right there. But what about the area inside circle 3? That apparently is not the full area inside circle 3. It's just the area between circle 2 and circle 3. So that area right there, if you can see, just that area. I mean, that that's just, I mean, I'll, I'll, it's a terrible question, but I'll do the solution. So circle 1, that's easy. That's just pi r squared, where r is 1. So that's just going to be pi. The area inside circle 3 is just the circle 3 area minus circle 2 area. So that's going to be pi 3 squared minus pi 2 squared, so that's 5 pi. And then the area inside circle 5 is basically the area that's between circle 4 and circle 5, so this area in there. So that would basically be calculated with a pi 5 squared minus pi 4 squared, so that's what, 25 minus 69 pi. And then you have to add these guys up to get the total uh, area, which would be 15 pi. And therefore, 15 pi is equal to your m pi, and therefore m is equal to 15. And this is a terribly worded question. A positive integer is said to be bidigital if it uses two different digits with each digit used exactly twice. For example, 1331 is bidigital, whereas 1113 and so on are not. Determine the exact value of the integer b 
the number of bidigital positive integers. Okay, so we have a couple scenarios here. The first, of course, we have to realize that it's a four-digit number because you have to use two digits twice. And I'll call those digits A, A and B. Don't get confused with that B. That, that doesn't mean anything. Okay, so for each A and B scenario, I can have different combinations, right? We have A, A, B, B. We can have A, B, A, B. We can have A, B, B, A, ABBA, which is a 1970s group, music group. And then we can have B, A, A, B, B, A, B, A, or B, B, A, A. So no matter what you choose for A and B, they have to be distinct, different digits. That's the key. You get six possible combinations. So let's talk about this. What can A be? Well, A is a digit, anything from 0 to 9. But the 0 I will talk about later because that's a little bit different. So I'm just going to go with 1 to 9 as my choices for A and B. Whatever I choose for A, I have 9 choices. I can choose any digit from 1 to 9. Whatever I choose for A, I cannot choose for B because they are two different digits. So I have only 8 choices left for B. So the total number of choices is 9 times 8, which is 72. For each such uh, pair, I have 6 different combinations. So 72 times 6, which is 432. But here's the thing. We have double counted. This 432 double counts. Why? Because let's say you have, let's give an example. Let's say you chose A and B to be 4 and 5. And then you make these six numbers, right? But A and B, if you chose them to be 5 and 4, they would make the exact same six numbers. Uh, so this 432 is really, you double count it, so you have to cut it in half. And when you cut it in half, you get 216. So 216 is the number of unique uh, cases. Now we talk about the 0. Remember, up here I only said 1 to 9. The 0 is a little problematic, because if you have A and B, and you make A a 0, then look. A lot of these numbers are no longer four-digit numbers. These three would be three-digit numbers. So that has to be taken into consideration. right? And the same thing holds true for B. If you did it for B, it would be the same kind of thing. These three would be three-digit numbers. So if A is 0, B can be anything from 1 to 9. So you have any of those nine choices. right? So B is fixed as 0, so that's just one choice. And B can be, sorry, A is fixed as 0, which is only one choice. And B can be anything from 1 to 9, so you have 9 choices. And then for any such A and B combination, we can only create these three. Because these ones cannot be created because the leadoff would be a 0. And therefore, that would no longer be a four-digit number, they, they would be three-digit numbers. Okay, so that means we have 1 times 9, which is 9, and then you have to multiply that 9 by 3, because we have only three scenarios this time, not 6. So 9 times 3 is 27, so that takes care of the number of cases with a 0. So then we have to take the 216 and the 27 and add them, and when you do, you get 243, and that is the answer to this question.